Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and this video I'm going to talk about placing Starship on top of SLS which is something a lot of people keep suggesting to me even though I think it's a horrible idea. I previously made a video replacing the SLS core with Starship because after all Starship has about the same amount of total lift capacity. Uh, it's got actually more thrust than SLS core but it's got less ISP so it needs to use more propellant so it about evens out. Uh, you could say that it has about the same total impulse as the SLS core so it's more or less a drop-in replacement for it. So there's no point in putting Starship on top of an SLS core. Uh, but people keep saying that I should try it for some reason and uh, so it's uh, nobody in particular it just keeps coming up so yeah and now I've also decided to try out uh, using the B9 procedural control surfaces for these fins to see if we can actuate them properly uh, obviously uh, this end isn't looking right it's sharp instead of having a taper uh, but yeah we will fix that if it turns out that this sort of arrangement actually works but because everybody always mentions that the fins are actuating wrong I decided to try this out and see if this is gonna be okay but anyway let's talk about the whole business of putting Starship on SLS as you can see if Starship is fully fueled and has payload in uh, we do have payload in it's about uh, 80 tons in there that tank right there uh, it can't get off the ground okay so that's not an option uh, Delta V wise it's fine I guess but it's not going to be very useful if we take the payload out I mean that doesn't help a whole lot it'll hover for a bit they'll eventually start going up I suppose but it's not gonna be great the main problem isn't the getting off the ground though it's what happens when we dump the SRBs you can see that the thrust weight ratio is 0.42 and so that's the real problem uh, it's when we dump the SRBs because this uh, whole SLS core has the same amount of thrust as this we can't possibly have this fully fueled so the question is what's the optimal sort of balance here uh, we'll I guess we'll leave the 80 ton tank in for now let's see how to configure it but we can underfuel this now the top of SLS has probably a certain limit to how much it can actually take on top of it and if we think about that it's basically SLS block 1B which is let's say 180 tons uh, with buffer and then a 105 ton payload right uh, because SLS block 1B to lower orbit could carry 105 tons max so we're talking roughly speaking it can carry 300 tons on top so at least we can say that if we had Starship empty it would be able to carry this up and uh, in fact it can now why do I still have Delta V up there mm, this is uh, this is methane oxygen we need to lock this okay uh, so it can carry it because it's 200 tons the body is 120 or so and this payload is uh, 80 uh, but not it, it can't do it all the way to orbit and so around here-ish we're already at the limit as far as what structurally SLS can probably carry and thrust weight ratio here is horrible um, one thing we could do instead of underfueling Starship though is underfuel this core uh, first of all we'd have to do the oxygen uh, there's a separate oxygen and hydrogen tank uh, let's say we go to 80 percent on both we can we we get a better thrust weight ratio here this is one reason why it's an interesting question because there is sort of a delicate balance going on it's not obvious how we're going to actually do this in the most efficient way so we can fill around with the numbers and we have to underfuel both starship and sls to get the optimal situation so now we've got 0.83 there that's not great but overall our uh delta V is improved so let's say we had nothing in here and we topped off SLS we only get 7900 but we take fuel out of SLS and put fuel into uh, Starship then we get a better delta V but eventually we're going to be pushing 
the limit of what SLS core can carry on top of it though. So basically we are going to do that. I mean, uh, let's see. If we didn't want to push that limit, if we take the payload out, now we have enough for orbit. So let's go payloadless, but with crew. We have the crew uh, pod there. So we could bring Starship to orbit with crew. That's a nice thrust weight ratio. Let's do this first. Let's try this out first, see if we can actually get to orbit. No payload, but SLS for some forsaken reason being used to lift Starship to orbit. Maybe Super Heavy is down for the count for some reason and NASA really wanted to pay to use Starship to launch people to low Earth orbit because <laughs> this isn't going to the moon right now and the refueling it is not going to be possible. Well, anyway, let's just go with it. So for reference, without the payload, we have 250 tons. So it could carry this on top of it, the SLS core, I mean. Probably that's not a difficulty. Aerodynamics uh, with the fins is interesting. Without the fins, it'd be a breeze, but with the fins, it's interesting. Oh, and the thrust weight ratio at the end, we'll, we'll have to throttle the Raptors down quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, let's give it a go. So, here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on. Oh, I forgot to capture my cursor. I had turned it off for other purposes. Okay, there we go. Ignition. Launch. Are they? Uh, they're not actuating. Uh, are they? Oh, well, I'll keep an eye on them. I want to see whether those are actuating right or not. They're only set to handle yaw and roll right now. At least this isn't the worst configuration people have been throwing around. I've seen some ridiculous things that will cause me nightmares. You probably have seen them too, because... But we won't talk about them. There are things that should not be done to a starship, let me put it that way. This is pretty close to something that should not be done to a starship, though. Once the boosters get decently low, we can separate. Off they go. And we still have good thrust weight ratio. Let's double check. Oh, 1.1. Very satisfactory. Of course, a minor issue, if you want to put it that way, is that these uh, separatrons that are built into this uh, would blast the fins of the starship, so that ain't great. Well, these are supposed to actuate on roll, so let me try and roll it over. Okay, they are flipping the way they're supposed to flip. I don't know if that's gonna be any good for re-entry, though. But yeah, B9 uh, control surfaces are the only option for a procedural part to fit here but you can't make a straight edge on them like that. So I'll have to do something custom. But I haven't been particularly good at making control surfaces, so... Okay, uh, close to the end of this stage. And separation. And uh, let's throw all down in the ignition. Okay, still lots of G's. Actually, it wasn't too bad a separation. Oh, uh, somehow we're low on orbital velocity. Um, I forget if I put these on the action group. Shut down. Shut down. Yeah, uh, looks like we're short. That's funny. Well, funny might be the wrong word. Very suspicious. Okay, so we will end short of orbit. So not quite there without payload. Okay. Well, uh, well, we don't have enough fuel to do re-entry. It can't control itself like this. Okay.
uh, back to the VAB and we will make some changes. That was close enough that I don't want to do that particular test again. What I will do is we should go ahead and try and find the optimal situation. So uh, 9,500 here, even if we pass the structural limit of SLS at the top, we'll see how we do. We could probably push that a little bit more and a little bit less here and here. 0.88 that sounds okay let's get some payload back in just gonna do avgas so nothing thinks that there's delta v here well I think maybe we can get away with a 22 ton payload let's just go for 20 so what we're looking at is starship is sort of like a shuttle <laughs> and and we've got sort of like a shuttle external tank with shuttle main engines and shuttle boosters except Starship's dry mass is larger than the shuttle's dry mass so we end up with less uh, we, we've got actually more thrust at the beginning we've got four RS-25s but we end up with slightly less payload capacity and I think in the end this sort of makes sense also we're running methalox for part of the journey to orbit uh, which is less efficient than just going all the way with the Hydrolox. But, alright. Again, this is a horrible configuration. I don't know why people keep bringing this up, but here we go again. I think it's just to torture other people. Okay, so here we go again. And I'll leave that up for a bit because I want to mention the basic gist of what this is all about. But SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, uh, 1.4 thrust to weight ratio off the pad. So, the, the important bits are, well, how, what, how low can you go on the thrust to weight ratio when the boosters are done? That's one thing. That will determine how much you can carry in Starship and SLS but also how much actual load can SLS score carry on top of it is another thing there is some trajectory optimization stuff but more or less it's the balance of the fuels between Starship and the core and really, it would be better if we just dump the core entirely. Okay, separation. And once again, I didn't fix this stuff. Well, we can see that with the thrust weight ratio that we had after parting with the SRBs, it's been a sort of a struggle to get this thing to where it needs to go. Our, our orbit isn't shaping up great, let's put it that way. Okay, and Starship. Starship! Okay, Starship is a go. And we could use that thrust right about now. Uh, so we'll just assume, I, I'm not going to lock the gimbling on the vacuum engines. We're going to assume that they could use differential throttle to steer, potentially, instead of just relying on the RCS. I'm leaving on just the vacuums. Probably should have done that earlier. Yeah, we're not going to quite make it, but it'll be close enough that it's just a matter of optimizing to the trajectory so yeah we'll need to optimize that but I, I think you get the picture uh, what basically what you end up with is uh, not as good space shuttle right I mean we got a 22 ton payload and yeah and you are actually needing to build a bigger rocket to get it up here and right now I can't deorbit. So 
a little bit of optimization and maybe we'll get it there, but I'm not gonna belabor the point. I think uh, this is how it is. Let's go back to the VAB and see if there's more tweaking we can do. Seems like the thrust to weight ratio when we separate off the SRBs isn't good enough. If we put less in Starship, so right now we were just short with 9,658 and a 0.84 thrust to weight ratio at SRB SEP. Um, if we make less there and more here, because the Hydrolox is more efficient, maybe things will be better. I mean, it's tough. I mean, that's basically the same. There's just nothing good about this, folks. Anyway, and just a sort of side note, let's just take off the SRBs here, get rid of this whole SLS business, bring this on down, fill her up, slap the SRBs on. Not that you should do this. This is a bad idea. I'm just saying, okay, we get 9,552 if we uh, get the engines down. And we probably shouldn't light the vacuums at the ground. It looks less here. It's close though. God, that's horrible. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're close enough that if you used LRBs instead of SRBs, it'd work out. If, for instance, you used Raptor 9 rockets or something. Maybe we should do that instead. We'll think about that. Uh, I still need to design the more formalized Raptor 9 or whatever we're gonna call it. Nobody came up with a really satisfying name for that configuration. But if we have Raptor 9 first stages to boost this up, maybe that'd be nice. I mean, we're pretty close here right now, so there's hope. Uh, though, uh, those Raptor 9 Oh, why is it uh, have such a long... Oh, right, because we're only lighting. Uh, so how about if when we decouple, we light those? Oh, that's nicer. I think... Oh, God, this is horrible. We'll try it out. <laughs> um, okay, and we're going to keep the gimbling on those. Let's action group. Maybe I already have the action grouping of the sea levels. Uh, looks like six is for that. All right, uh, avert your eyes, sensitive folks. This is going to be painful. But you get the picture. I mean, uh, having the SLS core didn't appreciably increase the delta V of our rocket. It's like 200 difference between having the SLS core and dumping it entirely, which is why you shouldn't ever just put Starship on top of the SLS core. It's a horrible idea. <laughs> it's just... This is a horrible idea too, but this is a horrible idea to demonstrate that the other is a horrible idea too. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. Because Starship itself is basically the same as SLS Core, so... So all the people who inspire this sort of thing, shame on you. Get better ideas. <laughs> this is inexcusable. And swiftly I will return to better things with Raptor boosters and... And Aerospike SSTOs. Again, we still have that 22 or 20 ton payload in the bay, so that's the app gas there. Okay, booster set and the vacuum. Ooh, a little bit early on the booster set. And the vacuum, Raptor ignition. Once we hit 2 Gs of acceleration, I'll turn off the sea levels. We'll probably need to turn off the sea levels if we want to get to orbit like this. So, I mean, the major problem is, yeah, you get it to orbit. Any of these configurations, if done exactly right, could probably get it to orbit. But the problem is refueling it, right? Because it can't carry payload, enough payload to refuel another starship. And so, I mean, I guess you could have SLS carry fuel up to it, but that's going to be painful and still take a lot of trips. 
I mean, when I say painful, I mean expensive. Okay, sea levels off. So just the vacuums now. Okay, we are approaching orbit here. And shut down. Successful orbit. So here we have a demonstration that adding a stage doesn't necessarily make things better. The Starship and SLS core are completely interchangeable stages. So the net effect of adding Starship to SLS core or SLS core to Starship ends up being just adding the dry mass of the stage. So omitting one of the stages ends up leading to a rocket that performs better. So yeah, you don't want to do that. It, so just having more stages doesn't mean that your rocket is better. As we see here, you just made it twice as costly, basically. So, yep, here it is in orbit. Unlike the other tries, we have that payload, right? Yep, there it is. That little tank is in there. So, yeah. Let that be a lesson to all of us. Anyway. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can bring it low enough like this right now. We've only got 22 meters per second left, and it's pretty high in the atmosphere. So, okay. I don't think we can do a re-entry test with this, and yeah, I'll take my own time with that. That's always a long process, a lot of testing, so I, and I'm skeptical that this arrangement with these uh, control surfaces will do any better than the way I had before with just the wings actuating in the wrong direction. Frankly, them actuating in the wrong direction worked out pretty well, but anyway, uh, we'll leave it here. This has been enough. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.